kiddos are back in class, so we start this week's Explore Tulsa with a history lesson. Then our classroom takes to the sky. Followed by those who enjoy extracurricular activities. Plus we don't want to miss art class. Hi, I'm Stevie Fernandez. And I'm Trish Whitmer. It's good to see you here with us again for Back to School Week on Explore Tulsa. Now 1930 was a big year in history. Did you know that that was the year that Major League Baseball ruled that when a ball bounced into the stands, it was no longer a home run? Just an automatic double. Hmm, closer to home, in December of 1930, construction began on the Pensacola Dam. <laughs> Why is that so funny? <laughs> you said the D word on TV. <laughs> what are you, like nine? The Pensacola Dam is a major part of Oklahoma and American history. <laughs> You said it again. <laughs> Justin Alberti from the Grand River Dam Authority tells us all about the Pensacola Dam history, now celebrating its 75th anniversary. For Oklahoma and for Oklahomans who haven't seen this, this really is an engineering marvel. The Pensacola Dam was really the dream of a, a lot of people going back to um, the 19th century. A, a man named Henry Holderman as early as I believe it was 1898 or somewhere along in there, actually did an engineering survey along the Grand River uh, looking, for some, looking for acceptable sites for the dam. It would be close to, under 50, close to another 50 years before the dam was built. In 1935, GRDA was created, and the whole reason GRDA was created was really to, to have an organization in place to build this dam. About 3,000 men came from all over. Of course, this was a rugged rural area at the time, and they built this dam. It's a multiple arch design, 51 arches. The reason it's a multiple arch design is because during that time in history, materials were scarce during the Great Depression. Uh, manpower was abundant, and this type of structure takes a, not as much material, not as much steel, takes a lot of concrete and a lot of manpower, which they were, they were able to have. You know, when, when they poured this concrete, it was a 24-7 pour. For, for months at a time, around the clock pour of concrete, for months at a time. The Grand River Dam Authority, of course, was put in place, kind of oversaw the construction, and it has maintained and managed and operated the Pensacola Dam ever since. It um, is Oklahoma's first hydroelectric facility, but when the dam was built with those big turbines, of course, we're talking the late 30s, early 40s, a lot of critics said, you're never going to have a market for all that electricity. You know, that was back in the days when everybody had, you know, the one outlet hanging from their light bulb where, they're, where they're, maybe they had their iron. Then the war effort came along and Uncle Sam took control of the dam in early 1941, just about a year after it was completed, and it was operated to really kind of help fuel the war effort. You know, munitions plants, um, I believe Camp Gruber, places like that, received power from this location during the war years. You could look at the structure and not just not see, I mean, if, if our engineers from 1940 who built this were here today and they could look at this, they would, I'm sure they'd be proud because they're not going to see any major changes to the structure at all. It's still doing what it was designed to do the same way it was designed to do it. What really makes it special is when you think about 75 years ago, the men and the women who out here like we are today when it's going to probably reach 100 degrees or better, out here working in those conditions for all summer, for a couple of summers and you know, winter time as well, to build this so that we can have this lake here today. We have some photographs of people out on the water really before you would say the dam was totally completed. So really that first summer, 1940, the lake pretty much filled up then. I'm not sure they would, an, they would have anticipated that much popularity of the water as a water playground th that day. Um, this is a 46,500 surface acre lake, highly developed with, with um, all kinds of places to live, with a, with a waterfront view, uh, large marinas, restaurants on the water, um, plenty of room for sailing and fishing and, and recreation.
Um, but really, if you just look at it, it's still this, this grand old dam, they say, doing what it always has done. It is truly amazing when you think about it that those guys built that Pensacola Dam in just 33 months. That would never happen today. Everybody would have cell phones and they'd be playing games and texting. To learn more or plan a trip to see the Pensacola Dam for yourself, visit grda.com and look for the Pensacola Dam and other Grand Lake landmarks at rsu.tv on the show Living Grand on Grand Lake. I think it'd be pretty cool to do a flyover and check out the entire lake from above. Yeah, but you'd have to learn how to fly first. That's why next on Explore Tulsa, we're going to meet the guys at Viking Aviation School in Owasso. Hi, my name is Randy. I'm with Video Revolution Sales Associate and DirecTV Manager. Here to tell you today about some really good offers we have for DirecTV. Right now we're offering free equipment, free installation for up to four rooms. We've got a brand new Genie box that records up to five shows. Right now DirecTV also offers wireless boxes. So if you want to put a TV in a bathroom or out on a patio where we can't get wires, for $99 you can get up to three wireless boxes. Well, you have the genie in the living room, and then you can get these little mini genie boxes here, which you can put in your second, third, or fourth bedroom, and they all talk with the genie and allow you to record in every room. But what's really nice is even if you've been recording in the living room, you can bring up your DVR playlist from any room in the house. Right now, they have really good deals going on. The choice package is $32 off a month for your first year. They're also going to give you three months free of all the movie channels, HBO, Stars, Showtime, and Cinemax. We also offer, with anything on the Choice and Above package, you get the whole season NFL ticket for free. They have a lot of free apps now for your smartphones and your tablets where you can actually set your recorder. When you forgot to record your favorite show, you can actually talk to your phone and it's going to go to your favorite channel and record it for you. Come on down and see me. I'll be happy to go over some of the programming choices and uh, what kind of great deals we can do for you. Hello, I'm John Erling with Voices of Oklahoma. Our great state has been home to countless individuals whose place in history has been earned through each of their many accomplishments. Voices of Oklahoma's mission is to preserve their story in an oral history presentation like none other. Accounts direct from famous Oklahomans, political figures, and many others who have left their indelible mark on the development, history, and future of Oklahoma. So please, treat yourself by listening to those who are the Voices of Oklahoma. Hello, it's great to see you back as we continue with more Explore Tulsa. Let's do this, Trish. I'm ready to learn how to fly. You know, Stevie, flying takes a lot of practice and learning about planes and aeronautics. No, it's just like riding a bike. Two pedals and a handlebar. That's all it takes to be flying, but I'm still a little bit, you know, trying to figure out that landing part. Well, that's a pretty important thing to know. So why don't we go meet David Willer and the guys at Viking Aviation School? Are you ready? We have clearance, Clarence. Roger, Roger. What's your vector, Victor? Oh, brother. I was born with wings. <laughs> uh, my, both my family, both sides, mom and dad's side of the family are, are aviators. Uh, and I decided when I was a little kid, probably just after potty training, uh, my dad took me up flying and let my brother fly the airplane. And I was in the back seat and I didn't really like that very much. <laughs> so I decided right then and there that I was gonna learn how to fly. My, uh, Uncle used to work for Delta Airlines, and uh, back in the days when you could get free rides with relatives and stuff, so he took me up in one of, the, one of Delta's planes when I was probably six or seven. Actually, the owner of the school was my student. Before we started Viking, that airplane was, was part of the uh, owner of the airport, and he had it rental, and I was instructing out of it just as a uh, freelance instructor and uh, the owner came up to me and wanted to learn to fly. Well, um, the reason I decided I wanted to learn how to fly is really kind of twofold. Um, for starters, from a very young boy, I always had a fascination with flying. And when I was uh, pretty young in high school, I was able to take some lessons and uh, get acquainted. And then, uh, you know, things happen, life happens. And uh, I got away from it. And then in my career, I got to a place where I was spending all of my time in airports. I go to most of the hub cities around here because uh, in, my, in my day job we work for airlines and so I finally decided that if I learned to fly it would be not only a lot cheaper, it would also be a lot, uh, a, a big time saver for me because I could just go directly to from airport to airport.
Uh, most of our clientele are usually people 30 and above. A lot of them have always wanted to fly and never had the, the money before, so now they're, they're a little more successful, so they want to learn to fly. Uh, a couple of guys, like, our, like my boss, have wanted to learn to fly so because they, they have to do a lot of traveling for their business. So they, they wanted to save on uh, fares and have a lot more flexibility in their schedule. You pick up a, a, an enormous amount of time on the front end and the back end of every flight because you don't have to go through security, you don't have to wait for anything, and they bring the rental car to the wing of your car. So as a businessman, when I travel to, say, Atlanta, I land the aircraft and I'm in the car and I'm off the airport in under two minutes. Yeah, uh, there's, there's a lot of things in people's life that you try to draw from as an instructor. And then you take what they know and you build upon it and teach them what you don't know or what they don't know. So you take you know, their backgrounds and whatnot. So we try to, we try to get to know our, our students really well uh, because any of that previous knowledge, hopefully we can try to relate it. Driving um, you know, is one of those things. Uh, there, it's a lot of like driving, it really is. But then there's completely not like driving. So for example, you steer the airplane with your feet. You can't do that in the car. Um, so there's a little bit of things that you can do to kind of help the student do it, like fold your arms while you're taxing for the first time so they don't want to try to steer like a, like a vehicle. So when um, I flew at the bigger airports, you get in the aircraft and, and, and you're always paying for that time when the propeller starts spinning. And it was, I didn't realize what an added benefit it was that when, we, when you come out here you get in an aircraft and you're literally in the air in just a few minutes. At the bigger, bigger airport you have to um, call ground control and they taxi you around and you wait in line for the other aircraft. So out of an hour flight lesson you may only get 25-30 minutes of flight time actually. Here, you're getting 50 minutes of flight time every time you get in the plane. You can buy flights for somebody. You call out here and, you know, for under $150, you can surprise somebody, bring them out here to the airport, say you got a surprise for them, and then all of a sudden you're taking off and you're out flying over the lake, you're flying over downtown Tulsa, um, looking at the lights at Tulsa night, looking at Christmas lights, my kids absolutely flipped out when we came out here. It's a good way to just kind of get, take the day and, and digest it. And it's a good way to relax. It's a good way to just enjoy life, have fun, right? We, we're, we're here to have joy and this is one way that I do. You know that it's a it's a great feeling. I, I don't know that I I can describe how it feels when, uh, particularly when we have, you know, when we have some younger guys and when they they make their first solo or like Jay here when he Jay flew with us for a long time and he, you know they do their first solo and then they do their cross countries and then when they finally take that check ride and uh, and I get that photograph of that guy with a brand spanking new pilot's license. There's just nothing that feels better to me than than realizing that we were able to help that guy that person achieve their goals. That's the way to do it, Trish. Flying from here to there in your own plane. I just need to work on that landing part. Yeah, it's always the little things. If you'd like to learn how to fly, visit vikingflightschool.com to set yourself up with a discovery flight lesson. Or buy a gift flight for someone you know who would enjoy the adventure. Flying in my own plane makes me feel like a real celebrity or a famous athlete. If you're a famous athlete, then there must be a baseball card with you on it. Wouldn't that be cool? I was thinking more like shocking. But we'll take a look next at s and Sports Cards when we come back with more Explore Tulsa. Hey, it's Stevie from Explore Tulsa with my friend and optometrist for many years, Dr. Robert Zellner. Tell everybody why it's so good to come in to see you. <laughs> well, that's a great question. Let's see, we've got two great locations. We try to stay cutting edge at every point along the way because let's face it, everybody wants to come in and get taken care of in a timely fashion and get the latest, greatest stuff and save some money and get on with their life. And, and, see, and see clearly. And if you don't believe it, look on the website. Absolutely, drzellner.com. You can find that we have our two locations at 69th and Memorial and 3030 South Harvard, or you can give us a call at 749-2020 or 461-2020. And I got four kids, and I gotta tell you, as a big family like that, it's affordable too. Oh yes, and of course, the number one reason, you save some money. I mean, with our two pair specials, with our uh, different unique packages that we put together, I mean, you can come in here and your money can go a lot farther than anywhere else. 
And that's why with Dr. Robert Zellner and Associates, seeing is believing. Oh, I like that, yeah. Stevie. Well done. <laughs> Hi, this is Ken McLeod, publisher of Golf Oklahoma, and you're watching Explore Tulsa. If you're like me and used to collect trading cards when you were a kid, then you'd be so glad you stuck around for more Explore Tulsa. So Stevie, who's the most famous athlete you've ever met? Well, when I was a kid, I met Joe Namath at the Houston Intercontinental Airport. Ooh, that had to be pretty exciting, meeting Broadway Joe. Yeah, it was. He gave me his autograph, but it got a little weird when he gave me a pair of pantyhose, too. If you still had those autographs and that pair of pantyhose, they might be some really big money. Well, the best place to find out is in Broken Arrow at SNS Sports Cards. I just loved sports growing up and was passionate about just anything sports related. We didn't have cable, you know, so get the newspaper every single day, go through box scores and just was really passionate about actually getting to watch sports and participate in sports. We've had the store since August of 1998. Um, the previous owner had passed away and we were friends with the owner's wife and she was looking at liquidating. I was just out of college, thought why not? Let's opened a baseball card store and the other owner had another business so he didn't mind funding it and making it work. The first sports cards I got was in 1983. Uh, I was six years old. My mom had bought me some packs for Christmas and a stocking stuffer. Um, 1983 Tops Football was the first cards I ever got. The first mainstream sports cards was in 1887 called Allen and Ginter. Um, there was a few offshoot Regional stuff produced in the, actually in the 1850s, but the main, first mainstream was 1887 with Alan Ginter. The first sports cards made had actors in it, had uh, sailors, had Olympians in it. it was, the com tobacco market was very competitive. Cigarette market, tobacco. Um, Allen & Ginter was a tobacco company that decided, let's try to up the ante a little bit, try to get people to buy our stuff by putting car little trading cards, different things like that in there to stand out a little bit more. Rookie cards and autograph cards. That's basically what people have collected for years in sports cards. People have collected autograph cards for hundreds of years. That's still true today. Um, autographs, rookie cards are what people are after in sports collectibles. The autographs that come out of the packs, the companies, Tops, Upper Deck, some, the Panini, they put a stamp on the card or it says somewhere on the card it's an authentic autograph witnessed by an upper deck employee or tops employee, so it's certified when it comes out of the pack. That's it's, it's an authentic autograph. If somebody sits there and signs the autograph. Somebody sits and watches it. Um, they're certified. They're putting the packs, and that's actually what people are after when they open the packs now. Are, the, are really the autograph cards. Some guys, you can't read their autograph at all. Uh, some guys' autographs are very elaborate. Jerome Bettis has, has a very elaborate autograph, and actually draws bowling pins into his autograph because he's a big avid bowler. Um, everybody's different. What makes an, an autograph valuable is, is scarcity. Um, your players who sign a lot at ballparks and stadiums, autographs tend to be a little bit less because they're very accessible. Players that are harder to autograph or don't, are, not, are not known for autographing, you have to go through a company to get it a lot of times. Those are going to be pricier because the player doesn't sign as much and you're going through a company. A lot of the players uh, do have contracts with certain businesses and certain companies for their autograph. Now a lot of players, especially the retired players, the Whitey Fords, the Yogi Bears, and even Barry Bonds have opened their own websites where they sell directly to the public now. They've cut out basically the middleman. And if you would like uh, selling Nolan Ryan baseball, you go to Nolan Ryan's website and for $50, they'll sign you a baseball. Part of the getting, uh, obtaining the autograph is meeting the player, seeing them in person, shaking their hand, maybe getting a photo with them. That's a lot of the, the thrill of the hunt, uh, is actually meeting somebody that they root for, cheer for, you know, especially with the kids. As far as autograph goes to local players or anybody from the state, Kevin Durant is by far the most desirable autograph to obtain it from in the state. Um, now we have some legends from the area, you know, Johnny Bench, Mickey Mantle, some of those players that Warren Spawn. Uh, Mickey Mantle auto still are kind of king. Everybody wants anything to do with Mickey Mantle. Uh, but as far as modern players, Kevin Durant's the main guy. Yeah, maintaining the sports card business for this long, it's, it's difficult. It's not like it used to be. Uh, the industry's changed, sports athletes have changed uh, with the steroids, the, the off the field issues, um, doesn't make the hobby desirable in some, to some people. Um, so it's just really just hard work, diversifying, and just try to have a little bit of something for everybody. You know, kids are the kind of the future of this, we cater to kids a lot. We get a lot of kids coming in looking for $1 cards of Mike Trout and Kevin Durant, they don't have a big budget. 
you have to cater to those because those are the kids that are going to collect this stuff 20 years from now. Adam and Steve have some great sports memorabilia at SNS. I really love the Mickey Mantle stuff. They do have some great items that would make terrific gifts. Visit SNS Cards to find just what you're looking for. Sports memorabilia makes for the perfect art on any wall. Well, some people enjoy other works of art too, CB. Like what? Uh, like the Art Deco that Tulsa's famous for? Sounds like we need to visit the Tulsa Art Deco Museum when we return with more Explore Tulsa. Hi, Dr. Robert Zellner here. For over 20 years, I've offered affordable, convenient eye care in Tulsa. Right now, you can get one pair of glasses or contact lenses starting at just $99 or my two-pair deal for $129. Hey, and as always, the eye exam's included. Walk-ins are always welcome. Glasses are ready in about an hour. Plus, we have over 2,000 claims to choose from. We're open seven days a week. Come see why we're voted Tulsa Best. And our drive through at 69th and Memorial makes pickup simple and easy. For the best eye care value in Tulsa, Dr. Robert Zellner and Associates. Explore Tulsa is ready to jump into the Wayback Machine and check out life in the 1920s and 30s with a bustling tea town. That's when many of the iconic buildings of downtown begin to take their form, and the art from that time period lives on at the Tulsa Art Deco Museum. Art Deco is really kind of hard to de define because it's kind of this umbrella term that encompasses a lot of different things. It was really kind of the first modern art movement and design style, um, and I feel like it also influenced the, the modern movements in the 50s and 60s and even into today, and I feel like it's just um, an everlasting design style because it was pretty much the first modern art design style. The museum started in 2009. We partnered with the Arts and Humanities Council of Tulsa, and then in May of 2012, we opened up our museum inside this small gift shop space, and slowly we've expanded into all of this, the display cases out in the lobby. William Franklin and Chris McDaniels are the founders of the museum, and um, William had the, he's an artist, he actually did the painting behind me and some of the other paintings around the museum and um, he just had this great idea of creating a Tulsa Art Deco Museum because Tulsa is so well known for its Art Deco. Zigzag Art Deco is um, kind of a radically modern design style that was um, most popular in the 20s and 30s and it, utilizes like sharp geometric shapes and um, verticality while the streamlined Art Deco uses like smooth curves and stuff like that. So it's really kind of hard to define Art Deco, um, but it's just a radically modern design style that um, was most popular in the 20s and 30s. Um, some of our windows out there, um, like the zigzag Art Deco style I was talking about. Um, we have an exhibit on several different um, domestic appliances from the 20s and 30s that utilize that zigzag style. And it's interesting how ornate um, they created these pieces when they were just for everyday use. I mean, today we just make them out of cheap plastic or whatever, but they took time and care to make these everyday pieces really um, interesting and ornate. Some other windows we have um, range from like fashion to um, smoke stands. We have um, tw in the 20s and 30s smoking was a really popular thing and so you have a lot of these beautiful Art Deco pieces that are just meant to hold ash ashtrays and so it's really interesting and we also have um, a lot of Frank Arts which are probably one of our more um, high dollar exhibits or um, most expensive pieces um, from the Debbie Kelsey collection. She um, has a lot of her pieces inside our museum. She has an extensive collection of Art Deco and um, her name is Debbie Kelsey and everyone calls her Deco Debbie just because her entire house is filled with Art Deco pieces and Art Nouveau pieces. The Tulsa Art Deco Museum is important for Tulsa because Tulsa is so well known for its 
Art Deco history and through the years we've lost so many Art Deco buildings that it's important to promote Art Deco and the important design style that it was and how radically modern it would have been in the 20s and 30s. If you think about that time, um, there are tons of people living out in the countryside without electricity or plumbing and then they come to this modern city with this very geometric and um, modern Art Deco um, architectural style and it would have just been amazing um, just to see a new modern city like that with electricity and running water and all that incredible types of things. William and Luke and all those contributing to the museum have done an amazing job keeping that spirit alive from that time frame. It truly is a wonderful exhibit. To find out when the best times are to see for yourself, visit TulsaArtDecoMuseum.com. Next time we bring out the time machine, we should check out some of the Tulsa art from the future. While I explain time travel to Stevie, stick around. We'll be back with more Explore Tulsa. At Video Revolution, our home entertainment experts have been designing custom home theater solutions for both in and outdoor use for over 30 years. From flat panel LED TVs to 4K projector systems, the top name brands are here at Video Revolution. That same electronic expertise we also apply to our business communications network. From boardroom automation to video wall presentations. Video Revolution, Tulsa's headquarters for the best selection and installation of cutting edge technology. Hello, I'm Derek Toninato with the Tulsa Junior Oilers Youth Hockey Program, and you are watching Explore Tulsa. Be sure and join us next week when we meet pro jump rope champion Peter Nessler. Special thanks to Justin Alberti for taking us on a tour of the Pensacola Dam. Happy 75th anniversary. Thanks too to David, Mark, Jay, and Cortland for teaching us how to fly at Viking Aviation School and Adam Thomas for sharing his love for sports memorabilia at SNS Sports Cards. And to Luke Hembree for introducing us to the Tulsa Art Deco Museum. Remember, if you miss any of the show, you can always catch us at ExploreTulsa.com. As always, each week we feature the people, places, and attractions that make us proud to call Tulsa our home. Hey, don't forget to like us on Facebook. Share with us someone you think Tulsa should know more about. Plus remember, Explore Tulsa is brought to you by Video Revolution, located on the northwest corner of 71st Lewis. Stop by, say hello to Ron and all the guys for your home entertainment needs. And Explore Tulsa is also proudly brought to you by Dr. Robert Zollner and Associates. Home of the two-pair deal, just starting at $99 with two locations, 3030 South Harvard and 69th and Memorial. Well, that's all the time we have for you on this week's show, but we'll see you next week right here on Explore Tulsa. Yeah.